Africa rises, it's equally important to create future generations platforms so they can showcase their work. But also, we need to pay homage to those that have paved the way. And that's why we are here at the Standard Bank Art Gallery for the exhibition documenting the decades long career of David Golwani. Not only that, but also his advancement into visual arts for future generations and aspiring artists. So we have all of that, including more news and views from the continent of Africa. So Jumbo, welcome, Saubona. I am Jumelo Mutudwani and this is Hashtag Africa. A resilient visionary poetic expressions of Dr. David Golwani. That's the exhibition that you can find at the Standard Bank Art Gallery. Now, this, of course, document not only Dr. David Golwani's 40-year career, but also his contribution to the advancement of visual arts during and post-apartheid. And I'm joined by Dr. Tembinko Sigoni, the curator of this exhibition, to talk more about this beautiful exhibition. Thank you so much, Doc, for your time. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Let's talk about the exhibition, a resilient visionary poetic expressions rather of uh, Dr. David Godwan. What is it all about? It's about David's contribution into the visual arts in South Africa, on the continent and also internationally. So what we are trying to do is to provide a profile of his range of works that he's produced in the last five decades or so. Mm -hmm. So it's to say this is what David has tried to do visually. Yeah. Searching for a language to depict or express human circumstances, social issues, but as well as some kind of issues that he has engaged through ideas. So that's what the exhibition is about, his ideas, his experiences, mm -hmm. as well as the society in which yeah. he lived. In your interaction with uh, David Kolwani, as well as his art, why was it important for him to highlight those social issues through his art? It is because the black people, not only in South Africa, you know, uh, around the world, they have suffered severely from uh, regimes such as slavery, colonialism, apartheid. Mm -hmm. So that wrestling, that struggle to be free, but to be human, that's what David's concern has been throughout yeah. his life, to liberate not only the, the physicality of what it means to be black in the world, mm -hmm. but also the mentality and the spirituality. So that's what he has been striving to do throughout his work as an artist, as an educator, yeah. as a curator, a mentor, initiator, and so forth. Right. How important was it as well for him to also open up spaces for other emerging and aspiring artists uh, to also have their work acknowledged, but also exposed to the world? In an event where black people are deprived of resources, facilities, institutions in particular, so that was imperative for him mm. to set up this institution that otherwise they would have not been in place if it was not the efforts he yeah. made in collaboration with both locals and also international to afford those who are deprived these opportunities to study, to have space also to experiment as well as to produce work. Mm. Other artists uh, in the form of music have received, you know, criticism during apartheid for voicing out these social mm. ills. What were some of the responses that David received, especially during apartheid, throughout his career when he boldly uh, and courageously spoke out against social ills? One, let me mention two. What David did in the 80s uh, during apartheid was to set up a workshop called Tupelo, which mm. was criticized as an American import because what they saw is that he was bringing uh, abstraction mm. in an event where black artists were producing mainly figurative art. And David stood for that together with colleagues. And that was important because it provided a possibility to break from the stagnation of what at the time was called township art, mm -hmm. but also this kind of uh, overdose of figurative art. Right. So what David did was to create those possibilities against critics, in particular academics, mm. white academics at the time who didn't see what that, that's the importance of uh, Tupelo. What Tupelo did, it changed the course of uh, 80s, as well as afforded a number of other artists new expression, new ways of thinking, working with different mediums, experimenting with different materials. Yeah. And that have led also from uh, artists who are working with small scales to big scale, to installation and so forth. So that was one of, 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 of David's uh, kind of contributions. Yeah. And for anyone who wants to enjoy and indulge in his art and also learn about his work, how long is the exhibition running for? The exhibition is still until the 6th of December. So people are welcome to come anytime. 
And just to say one thing also, in addition to all these so political issues I'm talking about, also David's work is about aesthetics, about the beauty of what it means to make art, just expression, that's what the poetic refers to. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Tim Ngozi Gwaniwe, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, then. Well, you can still come to the Centerbank Art Gallery until the 6th of December 2019 to enjoy this beautiful exhibition documenting the career of David Gorwana, but also, you know, just documenting what he stood for, which is speaking out against social ills, but also uh, creating a space and a platform to show that there are possibilities for aspiring artists. But with that said, we're going to move now to uh, Nigeria, where a Lagos-based artist they named uh, Yusuf Abungunde is opening up, of course, more aesthetics and art. And, uh, well, he's introducing a new creative form called Ainism. Yusuf Abagunde is working on his latest project, painting the walls of a studio he shares with other Nigerian artists in Lagos. The 22-year-old painter wears a mask when he's working, which he says helps inspire his work. Each piece starts with a central object that branches out into intricate lines and patterns, which he says symbolise different stories. He calls his art form Ainoism, a technique that features the movement of lines and spiral patterns using acrylic and charcoal. It is deeper than just drawing lines and patterns. It actually has symbols in which I am building their meanings because whenever I'm creating my pieces, I see and discover new symbols that doesn't exist before, so I give them meaning. Aina is a name given by the Yoruba tribe to a child born with its umbilical cord around its neck. Abagunde says the lines he paints mimic an umbilical cord. He says his art is about symbolism and the cyclical nature of life. Although some people regard it as a juju or black magic. When people see it sometimes they say it's a juju art. Some say it's fetish, but the idea is if we were not colonized by the whites, this is what we will be. You understand? So the lines, the patterns, you know, the mask itself, it is all connected to what we are. And he's managed to connect with a lot of Nigerians, becoming a sought-after artist who is commissioned by private clients and art galleries across Lagos. One painting can take between 4 to 12 hours, depending on the intricacy of the patterns and size of the wall, and can cost well over $1,000. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we've got more to showcase from African art. We'll be right back.